Okay, so we will start with the session. Good evening to one and all. Chaitalia, your host for today's session. Security for .NET apps. So we will have a small introduction about the session. Before that, let's have a small introduction for today's event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetics is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solution that can help every individual as well as the uh, uh, corporate people. Our expensive greenfield solution includes onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification, certification plus add on cloud adoption, architecting practice playbook, latest technology training, emerging technology training, content development and more. Today's IT technology is changing at the bat of an eyelid and staying at par with the evolving technology is absolute necessity. We are a team of well qualified expert and experienced industry certified profession who are most more than willing to share their experience and learning challenges with you. For more information, we are available at info at synergetics-india.com. Today's session is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology. You just need to follow a meetup group, which is emerging technology community. Just install the app on your phone and follow our community. So you will be updated about our events, meetups, upcoming webinars and workshops. Now code of conduct we all need to follow. Please note that no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. For recording, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. The link will be provided in the chat box. Next slide. Agenda for the session. As you can see the agenda for today's session. I hope you all have understood that this is will be this will be the overview session. In Synergetics, we provide in-depth training on this topic. If you need training for this topic, you can connect us on info at synergetics-india.com. Speaker for today's session, Ms. Sarita Lard. Sarita Ma'am is a .NET trainer. She has years of experience in training. She has developed interactive software using Flash and .NET for learning English grammar. Next slide. Our upcoming Cert Ready webinar, as you can see on the screen, AI 102, which is on 16th June, four hour session it will be from four to eight. Link will be provided in the chat box for registration. Then we have DP 203 on 21st of June. Again, the link will be provided for the registration in the chat box later. Next slide. You can follow us on our social media platforms. To get update related the upcoming sessions and webinars. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Sarita ma'am so she can take you ahead with the session. Thank you. Thanks to all. Thanks Chaitali. Let me share my screen. So all of you are working as a .NET developer and you know what are the security risk. So in this session, we are going to discuss about the top 10 security risks about our applications. And OWASP is a organization. It is a non-profit organization. They go on surveying continuously the applications, web applications, web, web APIs, websites, and they have come up with the survey result that we are going to discuss first. And after that, we will be discussing every point, uh, what are the vulnerabilities and how we can overcome that in our application. So this is the agenda of our webinar today. And 
in the short time, it's uh, as uh, you know already. Chaitanya has explained. This is an overview. So each and every um, vulnerability we cannot discuss with the demo. So I have taken two important vulnerabilities like injection and server side or cross site forgery. So that I will be demonstrating you what is the vulnerability and how we can overcome that. So you all know that uh, during the Corona and after the Corona world has totally changed and maximum activities or day to day activities are going online. Most transactions are going online right from the street retailer to the enterprise businessman. Everybody is going online and that too for the financial activities or health um, projects or every sensitive data is transferred um, online and that's why it is a need of our that our development should be very careful about the security and hacking. So that is why this is the importance of our open web application security project OWASP and we are going to see immediately the survey report what that survey report you can see on the screen 2017 injection was the top uh, risk now there it has been slightly changed here in 2021 broken access control is the maximum risk for our applications on the second place cryptographic failures it is there third is injection sql injection then fourth one is insecure design next is security misconfiguration sixth is vulnerable and outdated components or application seventh is identification and authentication failures eighth is software and data integrity failures ninth is security logging and monitoring failures and tenth is server side request forgery <clears throat> so we, we are going to discuss one by one all these points in short so first what is this broken access control so it is enforced that users should not get access out of his limited permissions so failure to that can access the important information on your resource or even the hacker can modify or destruct all of your data on the server and third one can be the unavoidable business transactions or business functions that can be out of limit of the user that can also be possible so what are these vulnerabilities so this is the main principle that deny by default means every resource on your server should be denied and only the access should be given according to the role of the user, whether he is admin use or the uh, admin user or the staff user or the common people. So according to roles, the access should be given to the resources on your web application. So if we violate this principle, then there is a risk of break of access control and hackers can bypass the access control by modifying the URL. So this is a, again access control broking. So by attack, by changing the URL, they can tamper your resource. So next is to permit or view or edit the record of user it is lim it should be limited to his unique identifier only then sometimes user may not get login by authentication but he can directly get login because of your misconfiguration and directly acting as an admin and or he can login as a user so that privilege can be got into the hacker Next is metadata manipulation, just like for example, JSON token access can be broken and he can get access. So we have to avoid all these vulnerabilities uh, that is access control breaking 
and how we can do that. So how to prevent that? So first thing is that you should deny by default all the resources. First, he on home page he should he must get the identification verified. Then that means the implementation of access control mechanism should be done once and then it should be reused throughout your application. Then model access should be limited to single record of that user who is identifier and he should not get access to other all records. Then uh, there should be care taken that whole web server directory listing should not be displayed on application and bro uh, that back backup files or very source code important files should not be kept accidentally into the web routes. Then there are chances of login access control failures. So if there are multiple failures of the user while logging, the alert should be immediately given to the admin people. So repeated failure should be detected immediately by the admin people. So this is how you can prevent the breaking of the access control. Then next is stateless session identifier should be invalidated when the user logouts or the JW token, JW, JWT token should be short lived and once he logs out or he moves away from the desk, then the JWT token should be, um, we can say they should die. Then second point in this survey is cryptographic failure. So cryptographic failure means uh, when the data is transferring from your application. So care should be taken about the um, sensitive data. First of all, you will have to understand uh, the business data, which is most uh, sensitive data. You have to take the requirement about the uh, data, how and which kind of data of the business is very sensitive that you have to study a lot. And even where the data is transit in the transit or at the rest, for example, the passwords or credit card numbers or health card records, personal information, some business secrets. So all this care should be taken that um, the data should be encrypted. So when our uh, cryptographic failure has chances, we can see over here that is any data transmitted in clear text? If suppose the data is in the clear plain text, then there are 100% chances, chances of failure and hacking. So the concern about the HTTP, SMTP protocols we have to take care upon and of course uh, when the data is transferring in the internal parts of your application, like load balancers, web servers, backend systems, there also are chances of hacking. So you should take care of that. That plain data should not be transferred. And the cryptographic algorithm, second point is that algorithm should be very strong. You should uh, take care of that. You should have tested that algorithm for the data and the protocols used either by the default or it should not be old algorithm. Any crypto keys uh, should be, care should be taken that they are not weak crypto keys, they are not regenerated or they are proper keys. So next is encryption is not enforced. Are there any HTTP headers missing? So you have to take care of that. <clears throat> and lastly is that the server certificate is that trusted and validated or not that should be checked. Now how to prevent that cryptographic failures. So classify that you have to classify the data which is processed, stored and transmitted 
by the application, then we have to identify which data is sensitive according to the government's privacy laws, regulatory re requirements or business needs. So we have to take the requirement of sensitive data thoroughly. You have to study that data, uh, which laws are pertaining to that uh, sensitive data. And one thing you have to keep in mind that the sensitive data should not be stored once that uh, data is not stored, then there is a less chance of hacking that. So discard it as soon as possible. Data that is not retained cannot be stolen. So make sure that it is encrypted. All the sensitive data should be, which is at the rest. So that should be encrypted and ensure that up to date and strong standard algorithms, protocols and keys are in place and use the proper key management. So you have to test that algorithm and then deploy. So encrypt all the data in transit with the protocols and TLS with the uh, forward secrecy ciphers. So cipher privatization by the servers and secure parameters. So you have to enforce the encryption using the directives like uh, HSTC and disable the caching of the sensitive data. Sensitive data should not be kept in the cache object. Now, third one is injection. We are going to see it practically. So <clears throat> generally SQL injections are going to happen to tamper the data. So backend can be tampered using the SQL injections. So user supplied data is not validated or it is not filtered or sanitized by the application. And second thing is that if your queries are um, dynamic or non-parameterized queries, then uh, hostile data can, ins can be inserted in your application by the hacker and your backend can be tampered. So hostile data is directly used or concatenated with the user's data and generally the SQL commands can contain this malicious data and it will go inside the database server and fire the queries which are unexpected to hack the data at the back end. So it is an interesting topic. So we will just see that practically. <clears throat> So this is my .NET application I have created already to curtail the time. So I am going to show you how the SQL command can be utilized to fetch the backend data. Now I'll show first of all this. This is my login page. And this is simple web application, not MVC. Uh, this has got user ID, user, user has to input his user ID and password and he will log in to the next page. Now my next page, I will already have developed it and I will show that the next page. So, not this one. <clears throat> so this home page we have written code for login here the connection string and now we have a query this query i have written that uh, command dot command text select count of user id from user login table there is a user login table where user id so this is a plain text query user id equal to text box one which is a text box one here so txt user id so this this is txt user id and txt password so these are concatenated and when this query is successful 
it will fire at the back end and user will go to directly next page. So default.aspx. So let us see this. I am entering my name as a user. I am not a hacker, definitely. So it will smoothly go to the next page. Now, instead of me, suppose there is a bad tempered person. Now, what he will do, he will not write the sincere data, but he will write such kind of code. Dash or space dash dash then dash one. So suppose it does like this. See how you can get. So he is smoothly working on the next page, even though he has no user ID and password. So he has gone here, but not only that, uh, let us see what can be done using this query. One minute. I'll open my SQL server. So what happens at the back end? At the back end, the query written by the user is generated like this. So this query is select count of user ID from user login. This is the name of table where user ID is empty or one equal to one and password is empty or one equal to one. That means before or user ID is empty, password is empty. So this gets executed and you can see he can get the idea how many records are there. So more that complicated queries he can fire. And why this happened? Because we have written the query as a plain text. So your data is transferring through the network as a plain text. That means there is no parameterized query. So as there is no parameterized query, the data at the back end can be hacked. So this is the vulnerability of injection. Means other data can be injected due to this query. So you can modify this. You have to use the best practice as com dot command text equal to you have to use select count the ID from the login here can see I can copy this and modify this. So instead of writing these things, what we will do, we will take parameterized parameters. 
at the rate user ID. <clears throat> And is there and and great EW. Select count of user ID from user login where user ID equal to user ID and password equal to password. So this inverted comma should not be there. We'll have to use SQL parameter E1 equal to new SQL parameter. user ID, so well formatted data type dot pair care. Even dot value to txt user ID or text to dot value equal to txt password dot text. And plus dot add even now we'll build this. Now we try to run this. Now again, we'll try the same type of query and let us check whether it will go or not. One. Now you can see invalid credentials. Now it is not allowing you to go to the next page. So this is how we can avoid the <coughs> hacking due to injection. So all, always you should try parameterize query. So there are many measures to be taken and due to time we cannot discuss practically all the things. So this is how injection can be avoided. Again, we'll go to the next slide.
<clears throat> so uh, how to avoid this preferred option of the safe API, which avoids the interpreter entirely provides the parameterized interface. So basically we use the ORM tools. Then use positive server side input validation. So always we use the validations on the server side. Uh, dynamic query escape characters you have to use. And you can use the limit for the data whenever there is a, a query to fetch multiple records at a time. So you should not go for the select star for query, but you should use other type of query like suppose I want to display what are the number of records available in this table. It is select star from. Persons. Or person. So instead of that, you can use. This query. Top. 50. First. This so you can use this kind of query. So all most all data will not be accessed. So you should use in MySQL there is a limit keyword and in SQL you can use uh, percentage or numbers. How many records to be disclosed at a time in a select star query? So escape sequence character should be used to fetch the data. Now next is insecure design. So there is a difference between insecure design and implementation of the design. So we have to differentiate between the design flaws and implementation defects for the reason. So there may be a design which is a secure one, but the implementation of the design of your application is not properly uh, doing the uh, def for the defects for the vulnerabilities, then there is no use of secure design. So you will have to decide about the secure design as well as implementation of that design. So what are the requirements for that? Developers should collect and negotiate the business requirements for the application with the business and including the protection requirements. So what kind of protection uh, for which kind of data the business requires that is to be discussed and requirement should be taken and for the integrity of the data availability of data. So everything should be taken at the first step and then only you have to decide the design of your application. So how to prevent this insecure design? So first of all, establish and use a secure de development life cycle with the help of AppSec professional to help evaluate the design security. So design should be secure. After that, the library of secure design patterns can be utilized. Then threat modeling for the critical authentication, access control, uh, business logic and key flows. Everything should be taken into consideration for design the applications. So you have to integrate the security language and controls in your user stories. So you should use whatever Microsoft has provided for the security purpose. So identity, other things you have to take into consideration while designing your application. So you have to write the unit and test that data to validate the critical flaws of your application. So these are some, some examples of the attacks due to insecure design. <clears throat> so for example, uh, old email boxes like ready, etc. They use the forgot password. They use the question and answer to recall the password or to memorize the password and retrieve it again, they use the question and answer um, design pattern. So this is a not a good practice. Why? Because 
question and answer, there may be chance that other people can also know the questions. There are three questions. What is your favorite color or who is your childhood friend? What is your vehicle name, etc. So these questions are very simple and uh, many people can know that answer. So this is not a good practice to use the credential recovery using the question answers. So better um, technique should be used for the recovery of the password. So this is the example here. The cinema chain allows group booking discounts and maximum of 15 attendees before requiring the deposit. So many uh, Businesses give the, um, dip, uh, we can say, discounts for the group booking, travel tourism people or cinema booking. So what happens when uh, the hackers can, within a second, they can book for 100, 600 seats for the cinema. So it will tamper your data. So this type of technique should not be used. So this is the third one example is retail chain e-commerce website does not have protection against the bots. So this uh, there should be care taken that automatic um, processing of that um, reservation or other things can, or booking of some products should not be done by the bots. So care should be taken for anti-bot designs of your e-commerce applications. So domain logic rules such as purchase made within few seconds of availability might identify the authentic purchases and it should be rejected. So for automatic booking of any uh, product on e-commerce site should be avoided by bots. For that, you have to be careful for anti-bot designs. So your application should be designed in a such a way that automatic processing of any purchase order should not be done. And within first few seconds, there must be some monitor that uh, the unauthentic processes should be avoided. Now, next is security misconfiguration. So the application might be vulnerable if uh, the security of uh, there is a not appropriate security taken for the application. Unnecessary features are enabled. Unnecessary services are available there. So that can be a misconfiguration and it should be avoided. Default accounts and their passwords are still enabled and they are not changed. Means when you are developing application, you are uh, keeping some passwords open for just uh, the purpose of testing. So it should be very well locked before production. So error handling, sometimes uh, we use the stack traces and that stack traces can open up your technical code to the user. So it can help to, to the hawk hackers. So error handling reveals the stack traces. Even the line number of your code is open because of the stack traces. So this thing should be avoided. That is nothing but the misconfiguration of your application. Security settings in the application servers like frameworks, libraries, databases are not set to the secure values. Server does not send security headers or directives. That is also one of the vulnerabilities. So how to prevent that? So repeatable hardening processes make it fast and easy to deploy another environment and it is locked down. Development, QA and production environment should all be configured identically with different credential use in each environment. So credentials should be different for each environment. For development, it should be different. For production, it should be different. So minimum platform without <clears throat> uh, an unnecessary feature should be there. Documentation samples, you should remove all that which is not required for the production. So you should be very careful when your application is um, finalized uh, for the production, you should remove all these things. 
so segmented application architecture provides effective and secure separation between components and tenants so with the segmentation containerization and cloud security groups sending security directives to the client so that should be avoided automated process to verify effectiveness of the configuration should be done setting in all environment so next is vulnerable at outdated components so this is the, uh, mainly working for the applications which are already deployed with the older versions so this includes the components you directly use as well as nested dependencies so if you do not know the versions of all the components if the software is vulnerable and unsupported or out of date so it may be operating system or it may be a framework which is already deployed so this includes the database management system or apis or all other components and runtime uh, environments so they should be updated if you do not scan for them for the vulnerabilities regularly and subscribe for the security bulletins related to those components so there is a chance of hacking if you do not fix and upgrade underlying platforms and frameworks and other dependencies so there is a risk factor so this commonly happens in the environment when there is a patching of the updates and that patching is not on the regular basis but it is monthly or quarterly task so under that there is a chance of hacking so this is the exposure for vulnerabilities so your application is uh, already working and it is not updating the os or backend database management or other dependencies then there is a chance so it should regularly update the patching should be done regularly so if software development do not test the compatibility of the updated uh, and upgraded patches libraries there is a chance of vulnerability so how to prevent that so remove the unnecessary dependencies which are in your application remove the unnecessary features and components and other files and uh, documentation continuously uh, checking of versions both server side client side components that is to be done using the tools like versions and os uh, owasp dependency check etc <clears throat> so only to obtain components from official resources is the better way for the secure links so whatever components are required for your application you should not download them for um, from the unofficial resources but it should be done from the official sources and secure links so prefer the signed packages to reduce the chance of including modified and malicious components so, so for your application development whenever dependencies you are downloading you should keep the you should take the care of downloading those dependencies those libraries from the official links and better ways to download those links from the signed packages so monitor for these libraries and components that are unmaintained and do not create security patches for older versions so this is how you can prevent <coughs> now next seventh is identification and authentication failures so this is a more of a chance of identification and um, authentication failures so uh, we, which can permit the attacks on the cre credential stuffing where attackers has a list of valid user names and passwords so this is very routine attack uh, you might have faced so permits the brute force or other automated attacks uh, and it permits the default and weak and well known passwords such as password 1 or password 123 or admin admin uh, if user user id and passwords are very weak so 
that is the threat for your application. So that is up to the user actually. So user, user should be guided very uh, carefully about, he should be very careful about his passwords. Nothing in our hands in that case, but still you should enforce the password technique in such a way that user will not use such kind of silly uh, passwords like password one, two, three. So you have to use the regex patterns, pattern matching so that password will be very strong. So using plain text encrypted or weekly hash passwords data stores, this is the chance of hacking as missing ineffective multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is not there, then it, there is a chance of hacking. If exposed session identifier in URL, so on the address bar itself, if your session variable is displayed, then there is a chance of hacking. So reuse identifier after successful login. And in uh, your session ID should be invalidated once the session is timed out. So how to protect it? So wherever possible, multi-factor authentication should be used to prevent the automated credential stuffing using the automated brute force or other type of attacks. Do not ship or deploy with the default credential, particularly for the admins. So it should not be given as a hard copy or as an email, and it should be generated automatically. The credentials should be generated automatically by putting some personal data. Implement the weak password checks such that testing new or change password against top thousand world's password list. So password when user changes, you should take care that he is not repeating the same last passwords again and again or um, you can have a logic developed so that the top strong passwords are there, which out of that only he can take. So again, align the password length, complexity, rotation policies by the National Institute of Standard Technology. So this guideline should be followed. Then ensure the re registration and credential recovery, API pathways and harden against the account enumeration attacks by using the same messages for all outcomes. Limit or increasingly delay failed login attempts, but be careful not to create a denial of service. So we can limit the number of attempts done for the login, and but you should not log the site for the user. So it, it can be limited for three or five chances, but you should not lock it at least after 24 hours, it should be open. Lock all failures and alert administrator when credential stuffing or brute force or other attacks are detected. So there should be arrangement in your application that whatever failures are done, those are to be captured and alerted to the administrator. So using server-side security, built-in session management, which generates the random session IDs that can be used. So these are the examples of identification and authentication failures. So Credential stuffings, they use the list of known passwords as a for the common attack. Suppose an application does not implement automated threats or credential stuffing protection. In that case, the application can be used as a password oracle to determine if the credentials are valid or not. So most authentication attacks occur due to the continued use of passwords or as a sole factor. So you should your application should force the user that after a certain period of time he must um, change his password and that password should not be 
in the rotation. It should not be the same as before he has used. So you have to create the history of password he has used and you had to check for the new password which he is going to enter now and it should not be available in that history. So this care should be taken by the your application. So application session timeouts are uh, set correctly. Then the user uses public computer. Always generally the user doesn't log out, but he just closes the tab and goes out. So there is a chance that if the session is not automatically timed out within certain period or five minutes or seven minutes or 10 minutes, other hacker, other person, other user can uh, use his account and attack on his resources. So attacker uses the same browser and after an hour, then you he can be authenticated for the last user. So this is the case of the authentication failure. So you have to be careful about the passwords. Password should be very strong. These passwords should not be in from, new passwords should not be from the history and the session timeout period should be minimum so that hackers don't get chance. Now next is software and data integrity failure. So software and data integrity failure relates to the code and infrastructure that does not protect your integrity violation. So as an example, where the application relies on plugins and libraries and other modules from the untrusted sources, other repositories or the CDNs. So that helps to get the hackers. So the insecure CI CD pipeline can introduce potential for the unauthorized access and malicious code. So it includes auto update functionality. So CI CI CD pipeline auto update functionality is there. There is a chance of um, any unwanted code to be downloaded without in sufficient integrity verification and uh, without uh, checking for the trusted application. So attackers could potentially upload their own updates to be distributed and run over all the installations. So another example is where objects or data are encoded or serialized into structure that attacker can see and modify. So that is the for the insecure deserialization. So data can be deserialized and within which attacker can fill his data. So how to protect from this software and data integrity? So better ways to use the digital signatures, similar mechanisms to verify the software or the data from the expected sources and it should not be altered. So ensure that the libraries and dependencies which are coming from NPM or Maven are consuming trusted uh, repositories. You have to ensure that if you have a higher risk profile, then consider hosting an internal well-known repository that is weighted one. Then third protection is that ensure that the software supply chain security tool such that OWASP dependency check or other is used to verify the components which are downloaded from the NPM or Maven. So ensure that there is a review process for the code and configuration changes to minimum minimize the chances of malicious code or the configuration that can be introduced in your software pipeline. So there should be continuously one review process when you are downloading uh, from CDN or NPM, any components, other repositories. So there should be uh, continuously verification of your configuration, whether there is something unwanted code is going on, malicious code is going on in your applications. 
So you have to be careful about that. So ensure that your CI CD pipeline has proper segregation, configuration and access control uh, for the integrity of your code flowing through the build and deploy process. So ensure that unsigned and encrypted serialized data is not sent to the untrusted clients without some form of integrity check and digital signature to detect the tampering of the data. And most important is security logging and monitoring failures. So all of you might be knowing that we log the um, failures and other things uh, in our application activities. But what happens when the logging is done, but if it is not inspected regular on regular basis, then none of this use of log without logging and monitoring. That means you should monitor in regular basis on the regular basis the logs of your application. So bitches cannot be detected without monitoring insufficient logging. Insufficient data is logged or detection, monitoring and active response occurs anytime. So auditable events such as login failed logins or fail logins or high value transactions, those are not logged. These are some chances. Warning and errors generate no adequate or unclear log messages. The messages are not very clear. Then logs of applications and API are not monitored for suspicious activity. Logs are not only stored locally. Appropriate alerting thresholds or response or escalated processes are not in place or effective. An application cannot detect or escalate or alert for the active attacks in real time or near real time. So these are the flaws of your application that can be a risk for the uh, application because of only insufficient logging or if sufficient logging is there, sufficient um, failures are recorded in your log, but they are not monitored by the admin people. Then there goes the failure. So care should be taken even after the deployment. Excuse me. So developers should implement some or all the controls depending upon the risk of your application. Ensure that all the logins or access controls, server side input validation failures can be logged with sufficient user context uh, to understand the failure, to identify the suspicious and malicious accounts held for the enough time to allow the delayed forensic analysis. So you should take care of all these things. Ensure that logs are generated in a format that is uh, compatible with the log management solution and it can be easily consumed by log management solution. Ensure that the log data is encoded correctly to prevent the injection or attack on the logging system itself. So if your logging is done, but that only is attack, uh, attacked, then what is the use of that log? So you should ensure that your log data is also well protected. Ensure that high value transactions have an audit trial with the integrity control to prevent the tampering or deletion such as append only database tables or similar. So teams should establish effective monitoring and altering such that suspicious activities are detected and responded as quickly as possible. So this is most important and very easy to implement logging and monitoring of the failures. So some facts, real things I have uh, searched out on internet, which are due to the logging failures, monitoring failures. So uh, one child health plan providers website was hacked and 3.5 million children's health data was tampered. 
and changed. And the after that incidence, that review was found that website developers had not addressed sufficient uh, vulnerabilities as there was no logging or monitoring of the system. The data breach could have been in pro progress since 2013 uh, at the most period of the seven or ten years. So it was only due to the fault of developer that he has not uh, logged the data and monitor that data. So huge data was uh, tampered because of the logging and monitoring failure. Now second example is real example is that Indian Airlines had a data breach involving uh, for the more than 10 years were personal data of millions of passengers, their passports, credit card data, that um, data breach was occurred at the third party cloud hosting provider who notified to the airlines for the breach of this after some time. So this is also an example of logging failure. And third example is European Airlines suffered uh, the reportable breach that breach was caused due to the payment application security vulnerabilities exploited by the attacker who harvested more than 4 lakh customers payment records. So the airline was fined for 20 million pounds as a result of the privacy regulator. So this is most sensitive point about our application development that logging and the logging and monitoring. So not only logging, but you should monitor also that on the regular basis. And last one is server side request forgery. I will be giving you example of that. So cross site request forgery is there that flaw occurs when application is fetching a remote resource without validating the supplied url it allows the attacker to force the application to send crafted request to the unexpected destination even when the protected by vpn or firewall so as modern app web applications provide end users with convenient features Fetching the URL becomes very common scenario. So as a result, the cross scripting is done. So the thing can be avoided from the application layer. You have to sanitize and validate all the client supplied input data, enforce the URL schema, port and destination with the positive allow list. So do not send raw responses to the client and um, disable the HTTP redirections. Use anti-forgery token. So what is that? Practically we will see now. Now, this is a very simple example of transfer of amount. I will show you practically. So, this is a transfer. Account number is given. One minute. Account number and amount. So, this application has, uh, suppose, a person wants to transfer 2000 to one account number of say 1234 and that money get transferred. So now this site is on and now I will open another site.
Now this is another site. And user, same user is accessing this site. After some time, so what happens? Uh, he gets tempted with this statement win 1 lakh Euro European dollars by playing ultimate game and he clicks this. So what will happen when he clicks on that button? This amount has been transferred to other account. See how. So this first website is genuine website and this is a hackers website. What he has done? Let us see. Now first website you have. Just two text boxes. So this is MVC application. I think no, this is. Just one input text box is there with name is amount. Other input text box is there. With account. So this. Two text boxes and submit. That's it. This is his genuine website. Now let us see the hackers website. So this hacker website got the IP address of this one. See when you open this website, he has got IP address of this website. So this IP address he has got what he is doing. He has written. The firm action equal to this means when the button is clicked, when the submit button is clicked, this is a submit button. Same type of design is there, but the input boxes are hidden and the amount is already filled over here. So input box for amount is this one value is entered. Input box for the account number is already there and this is the hackers account number he has given. And when he submits, this form will get submitted to another. Means it genuine website will get fish and the account will get tampered. So this is how. Cross site scripting is done, so there are various ways of doing this. I will show another one also. So this is a genuine one and this one is hackers website. So he has transferred the amount to his account. I'll stop this. <clears throat> now let us see another example. <laughs> Now this is a example where user just enters the comments about the website and they are grabbed in the database. So user has just the form about to enter his name and his feedback is to be entered in comment box. Suppose I am entering this and I want to enter the comment that this is a good website. Suppose I want to write this good word in a bold letter. So if I know I can write here in HTML format. So B tag I am using over here. So you can see this tag is displayed over here. Now what can be done? Other record. I am writing. Instead of writing this tag, I can even write script also. I have a ready made script. I will 
copy that. In this text box, I will copy a script. It is a Java script. And here I am writing. Site is see what happens. Script type equal to text slash JavaScript and alert this site is hacked. So what will happen? See, this has been executed. And it has stored in database also. So instead of this simple text, a simple JavaScript code, he can have any other hacking purpose script also. So this is how hackers can tamper your website. So for that, what you have to use? You have to use anti-forgery token. And in the controller, in the controller, this is the post action. So what you can do, you can dynamically change this. If you want to make the text bold, then you make this dynamically. Instead of writing this, if you want to avoid the JavaScript attack, JavaScript code attack, you can dynamically change this B tag or underline tag u tag you can type the code or generate the code dynamically how can we do that first of all this is the create method here a data is coming for comment and that comment we have name and comment text box so what we'll do we will use one command builder object string command builder so sb comments and we append the text which is coming from comment text box so comment object comment text box we are appending and we will be replacing the code by this tag so ampersand lt b ampersand gt lt for less than gt for greater than so this will be replaced then Everything will be replaced for closing tax. Also, we will be replacing greater than we will be replacing underline. We will be replacing opening tag for underline and closing for underline. And we will add that to the object of comment. So this object of comment will get then. Added along with the name. So string encode name we are using http utility to encode the name also so we are using encoding for the data we have first of all unvalidated that in here we have made validate input false because we want to use b tag underline tag but we don't want to use the script tag so first of all all the tags will be not validated in input is not validated because we have applied the attribute validate input false that's why we have just now seen that the script tag is also there and it is executing but we don't want to execute that script tag it is registered in database as well as executed also but we want to avoid this execution of script tag which is done by the hacker so for that we can do 
first we use the validate input false but dynamically we will create the tags using the string builder and then input will be encoded and then it will be saved to just build this after that in our view model we will be sending this data as a raw so what we'll do we will use it as raw data so whatever tags we have used bold or italic the underline they will be utilized but strict script tag will not be used because that is not encoded we are using dynamic encoding now again i will be sending new comment see because of previously we were not using that raw data it has executed now you can see i am writing this it is right and then i am trying to write again the script so let us see whether this script executes or not previous was executed but this is not executed now you can see this site is not executed but it is stored in the database so this is the list view so this is how we can you can see in database it is captured the code from the hacker will be captured table comment is there and you can see this code is captured over here so whatever hacker has written the cross site scripting code that can be captured using dynamic encoding here so two important things to be remember about the xss is that all user input is validated but we have to disable that and after that html output encoded we have disable this as well so dynamically we will be creating that one more example i would like to take now uh, previous example we have seen that uh, the other site was tampered and the uh, amount was transferred to another account that can be avoided by using anti forgery token so i will open that again so this this is a genuine website where the amount was transferred to genuine account and other website we have earlier seen which was transferring the amount to the hackers account to avoid that what we will do 
in our controller we will write here the security measure provided by microsoft is validation anti forgery token this will avoid sending the url to the hackers account so this you have to use and in the view we have to use add date ml and the token so we build this Now here, right. and this website is open. Now this hackers website will be trying to do the transaction at his wish. now he clicks see he will get required anti forgery cookie requested verification token is not present so this is how you can avoid this forgery so again we will have one review about this so at the last we'll see we have seen uh, what is what are the top 10 risks uh, about the security of our web application in dotnet so it is relevant to other technologies as well to so broken access control that means access points which are controlled by the authentication and identification that how they are to be avoided then cryptographic failures are to be avoided by encryption algorithm strong algorithm should be used uh, then sensitive data exposure you sh you should uh, thoroughly study which kind of data is sensitive and that should not be stored permanently it should be um, either encrypted while transit or it should be disposed of then injection we have practically seen then insecure design means designing flaws should be avoided while designing you should take uh, maximum utilization of the security measures which are given by microsoft like identity and anti forgery tokens you can use validation tokens we can use jwt security misconfiguration so uh, it should be avoided that extra things which are configured in your application that should be avoided uh, then vulnerable and outdated components that should be avoided your uh, platform on which you are developing the os then the dependencies which you are using th those should be updated one then identification and authentication failures that should be avoided by using techniques passwords uh, should be strong so for that pattern should be used software and data integrity failures that can be avoided by using uh, strong logics then security logging and monitoring um, whatever chances are there for the uh, login failures that should be grabbed in log and they should be uh, continuously monitored and whatever number of Um, failures are there maximum number of failures that should be alerted to the admin server side security that means cross site forgery should be avoided by using different techniques so this we have seen in this session so over to chaitali
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I am finished. So you can take over. Sure, sure. Thank you, Sarita. Thank you, Sarita, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so okay, I have so shared, I have shared the, the feedback form in the chat box. box. Do fill out the feedback form and share your feedbacks on the session. We are done with the session. So do fill out your feedbacks.